Now attend the first snow and for some, the first tow of the season. A lot of this around the Twin Cities tonight as we deal with the first snowstorm of the season. We'll have the latest from the roads coming up. The storm also hit well beyond the metro. Tonight, a look at the conditions and its impact in greater Minnesota. Plus, Minneapolis 4th Precinct officers report for duty in a different way. And they need to do that a lot more often because a lot of the community does not know who the officers are in their community. Thanks for joining us tonight. Our top story, winter returns to Minnesota. Let's take a live look at radar. You can see the system still pivoting over our area. The snow will keep falling through the overnight hours. Already the metro is reporting several inches of snow. Outlying areas could see even more before the storm moves out. We have live team coverage tonight. Boyd Hoopert and Carla Holt hit the road to see how people are coping. But we start with Belinda and a look at current conditions. Bell. Well, you know, Julie, this uh, day started out with a lot of folks very slow in the morning commute with a couple of inches of snow. Then we had a big break and then, of course, the snow came back. So let's take a look at uh, that storm. As, as you mentioned, it is pivoting over the region and the snow is very wet. The temperatures have been riding right around 33, 34 degrees. So that is going to reduce the amount of snow that we will get just because of the fact that it's so heavy and wet. So right now around the state, we have anywhere between one to seven inches reported. We'll have those totals for you coming up in just a couple of minutes, but you can see that one band moving north, another band coming in from the south. So the timeline for the rest of the evening and through the morning commute will be slushy snow continuing until 2 a.m. And then we do expect a break for the morning commute. So that is great news. As you wake up tomorrow morning, the snow will be tapering. But then tomorrow during the day, the snow will continue. But most of it will be to our west. We'll talk about totals, have the seven day forecast and again show you where what fell so far coming up in a couple of minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Bell. Sadly, authorities are investigating their first deadly crash of this storm. Eden Prairie police say one person died when a driver crashed into a second vehicle on a frontage road near the 494-169 interchange. Well, the first snow usually comes with a learning curve for native and newcomer drivers alike. Boyd Hoopert caught up with those navigating Highway 169 and joins us live with the story. Boyd? Hi, Julie. We headed down Highway 169 about an hour south of Minneapolis this afternoon. The roads look pretty good, but as you know, or any Minnesotan knows, looks can sometimes be deceiving. We encountered a recent transplant from Chicago who encountered a slippery spot before we encountered him. It was all going so well until our splendid fall intersected with reality. I just flew up into the ditch. Wentz Edwards Park Avenue is more skid row after making an unscheduled stop along Highway 169 south of Belle Plaine. All the wonderful snow. The season's first storm managed to hit both the morning and afternoon commutes truck, truck. and caught Wentz tonight on his way home to North Mankato. It could be worse, but to hit that pole. Odds were zero, after all, that nature would leave all the decorating to city crews. I'm happy I don't have to commute. A lesson June Toyana learned before moving from Mankato to Lesur so she could walk to her job at the local cheese factory. So yeah. these are the nights where you go, I made the right decision. Definitely is. <laughs> Waiting on the uh, tow truck right now. Then, for Wentz, it came. A couple minutes to get hooked up and get pulled out, all right? Yeah, thank you. I'm thinking it's going to be pretty busy tonight, judging by the weather so far. Ken Teets knows he has a long winter ahead. It used to be a lot more fun when I was younger. While the Park Avenue's owner left the ditch and some advice behind. You must slow down. What else? The State Patrol is reporting statewide 391 accidents today. 37 of those were within, with injuries. Julie, you mentioned that fatality in Eden Prairie earlier. There was another, another fatal accident in Olmstead County, Highway 42 in the Elgin area. So a good reminder as people hit the roads again tomorrow to take it easy. Absolutely, thank you, Boyd. Well, unlike this morning's commute, it does appear many Twin Cities drivers heeded warnings tonight. 
The state patrol says there were just 31 collisions in the metro on the way home from work. That's compared to 145 crashes in the metro this morning. Well, tomorrow morning's drive could be a bit difficult as well. Plenty of yellow and red on the map with the snow still lingering above. You can find current traffic conditions all the time at care11.com. Well, tonight's storm expanded well beyond the Twin Cities with small towns stepping up to embrace the storm. The southwest part of the state is expected to be hit the hardest, but the snow left an impact in central Minnesota as well. That's where Carla Holt continues our team coverage. We headed up Highway 55 for a community meeting in Painesville with the Wetterling family. But that event, like so many others tonight, was postponed as the snow started falling. A little snow combined with the right season. Enough to turn towns into holiday villages and a slow business. This is actually my first year. Into a golden one. We were prepared. We had everything ready, set up. Sure, Alex Crams and his colleagues watched the weather like the rest of us but then had to help those holding out in denial. Of course, people call in last minute like, Oi, would you run over and blow us out? So we actually got like 10 people added. I'll be going slow just in case. Not so for Josh, young but prepared. Yeah, four wheel drive, heater works, so I mean, shouldn't be too much of an issue. But if it was a friendly reminder you needed tonight. One, you got it. Mother Nature provided it. It's a little slower than normal. Giving main streets everywhere and the people and businesses along them a chance to pause amid the storm. Specials every day besides Saturday. Not anything for the snow though, no. And Tim the bartender told us his commute to work took twice the usual amount of time. Certainly a typical tale for here in greater Minnesota and throughout the state. In Cold Spring, I'm Carla Holt, CARE 11 News. Well, several metro area cities have issued snow emergencies and some western Minnesota schools have delayed classes tomorrow. The latest list is located in the red banner on care11.com. And remember, conditions will likely change overnight. We'll bring you the updated forecast, closures and delays and road conditions on care 11 sunrise. It all gets started at 430 tomorrow morning. In other news tonight, a Minneapolis man is behind bars in connection with his ex-girlfriend's disappearance. Adele Jensen's parents reported her missing on the 21st, three days after they last saw her. Tonight, police say they believe Jensen is dead and her boyfriend hid her body. According to court records, 31-year-old Josh Dow told officers that Jensen killed herself. Dow's brother admitted to officers that he helped Josh dispose of Jensen's body. An Eden Prairie father faces child endangerment charges tonight, accused of leaving his baby alone in the parking lot while he gambled. Officers found 29-year-old Nicholas Anderson inside Mystic Lake Casino on November 21st after they rescued his 17-month-old from a cold car. The temperature at the time was 25 degrees. Court records say Anderson admitted he never checked on his son. He also told officers he struggles with gambling since being discharged from the military. In North Minneapolis, protesters are rejecting a call from political leaders to end their occupation of the 4th Police Precinct. The Minneapolis NAACP president says they will continue to stand with Black Lives members in demanding justice for Jamar Clark. The 24-year-old was shot and killed by a Minneapolis police officer more than two weeks ago. Meanwhile, four men were charged today for the shooting of five protesters last week. Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman said the felony charges carry tougher potential sentences than any hate crime charge. Federal charges are also possible. Well, while 4th Precinct officers keep watch over their buildings, some are spending time in the community, which has been critical of their work. Officers have been volunteering with loaves and fishes in North Minneapolis since the spring. Lou Raguse caught up with them tonight as they work to strengthen community bonds. Inside the River of Life Church in North Minneapolis, Hi there. for decades, Coleslaw, pickles. nonprofit group Loaves and Fishes has offered hot meals to anyone who needs one. It's a wonderful place to come and feed your family if you don't have enough food at home. Yes. On this night, when several volunteers couldn't make it through the first major snowfall, so they put you guys to work today. <laughs> Yeah. Loaves and Fishes called on officers from Minneapolis's 4th Precinct to help serve. Oh, that's good. These officers first visited Loaves and Fishes in the spring to offer security, but Inspector Mike Friesleben says their roles soon altered. They help serve food, they help clean up in uniform. Uh, like I said, they sit, with the, they sit and eat with the folks here, the families. And their visits quickly became more meaningful. And the cops get to see, you know, the other side of people too, where we're not just going to violent calls, we're, 
we're here actually serving our community. And these cops here certainly, you know, they serve, not only serve the community, they become part of the community. Banana or apple? You know, the kids don't always get to see the good. There may be no time more important for police and community to see the other side than right now. As protesters face off with 4th Precinct officers over the police shooting death of a young man. Some kids have been turned against police officers. I'm well, ma'am. Thank you. How are you? The real thing is here today. The, the, the interaction these cops are going to have today and they've had all summer is really how the majority of the community feels. No coleslaw. Pickles? Inspector Freeslaben doesn't want interaction like this to go unnoticed. Loaves and Fishes actually serves meals at 20 different locations. At this location, the inspector says a group of about four officers and one sergeant has been there about 50 times since spring. Julie? Great story. Thanks so much, Lou. Yep. Still ahead of 10, Belinda's back to tell us when the snow will taper off. Plus, answers behind a chain reaction crash that killed two more head brothers. And lingering questions behind an unsolved hit and run. Tonight, the clues that could help a St. Paul mother find justice. We have new details tonight on a rollover crash that killed two Moorhead brothers who were driving to a basketball tournament back in June. A final state patrol report says a semi that crossed the center line is to blame. Officials believe Zach Cavalvog overcorrected to move away from the semi and lost control. Zach and his brother Connor died. The semi driver has not been located. Well, St. Paul mother, critically injured in a hit and run, is speaking for the first time. Nine months ago, Safie Bowen, so Sophia Bowen suffered multiple facial fractures after another driver blew through a stop sign. Today, that driver is on the run again. Here's Carol Evans' Lou Ragoose. La, 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 la. The nighttime routine at the Bowen's home is a special time. Everything from playing with the kids to making the bed. Just seven months ago, the Bowens family was left with so many questions. I yeah. was so afraid that I would be just, I wouldn't know who you were, who the girls were. Right. That was all in question. Tyler Bowens had just put their two girls, Aliana and Noelle, to bed. Sophia was driving home from work. Then, a knock at the door. And then as soon as I knew it was a police officer, I knew something was not good. It was a crash involving another car. Sophia went to the hospital with a fractured skull, broken jaw, broken teeth, broken leg, and traumatic brain injury. Police say the other driver ran a stop sign at 54 miles an hour on a residential street and didn't break. Caught here on surveillance video. It just maybe my light bulb went off to say, yeah, maybe it caught something. That could be helpful. Neighbor Burgess Harrison's cameras caught the crash. You can see the car just blow through the intersection. And his cameras caught the suspect, who police believe is Danielle Civils, a 30-year-old with two gross misdemeanor drunk driving convictions, walking away in her stocking feet. Police found a slipper lodged underneath the Dodge Charger's gas pedal and at a liquor store. Surveillance video minutes before the crash shows a woman, police believe is civils, wearing what looks like the same slippers. Just seemed pretty open and shut to me. According to the charges, police found civils drunk and took her into custody, but she denied she was in the car. Police didn't have the charges ready within the required 36 hours, and they let her go. Now that there's a warrant out for her arrest, they can't find her. St. Paul police wouldn't grant an interview, but according to the charges, the blood test proving Civils was behind the wheel didn't come back from the crime lab until three months after the crash. Back in the Bowens home, there's no anger, only compassion. It's hard to say I'm angry at her. I just feel, I just feel for her. Returning the compassion given to them after the crash, friends, family, and total strangers raised $70,000 to help with medical costs. Every day, someone did something to help. Those things just made me realize, like, people are good. Like, yeah, bad things happen. We made bad choices, but, like, overall, people are really good. As for Danielle Civils, the Bowens say they don't want her thrown in prison with a long sentence. They just want her to find peace. And I think we can say that because, like Sophia said, because of our faith. Yes. The Bowens have found their peace with those initial questions, fears, now gone. I almost didn't get to be there to live a life that I have, which I love. Lou Raguse, Carol 11 News, St. Paul. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of Danielle Civils can tell the St. Paul Police Department she's charged with three counts of criminal vehicular operation. Hmm. Let's head outside now to Belinda. At 6 o'clock, it looked like a snow globe out there.
It really did. You know, and earlier, Julie, that snow was coming down in those big flakes. And you know what? This is really thick, wet snow. I'm sure there might be a few snowball fights at school tomorrow. No question. This is a lot of moisture in it. And that is one of the reasons we're going to get a little bit less than we've been talking about all weekend. All weekend, we talked about the possibility of three to seven inches of snow. Now we're basically talking around two to five inches just because the temperatures have been sitting around 33 to 35 all night long. So with that very very warm temperature, the snow compacts and it gets thicker, but you don't get as much of that. So that's what's been happening. You can see how warm the temperatures are because look at this. We have rain all the way up through Eau Claire right now, and then it just turns over to uh, the freezing point and allows it to fall as this very slushy, wet snow across the region. So we have another band just filling in, one band moving north, and we expect this to go on until about 2 a.m. before it starts to taper off. So here are the temperatures. Look at this, 39 Madison, 42 in Chicago, and 33 here. So that warm air is filled filtering in and, and, of course, affecting the amount of snow that we would get. When it comes to totals, here are some updated totals from this evening. We have four inches in Sacred Heart and Sock Rapids. We have uh, 5.8 there in Worthington. Comfrey at 5.5. Laverne has the most snow at 7.1 inches from today. Then we move uh, closer to the metro and around the metro. We have two inches Mankato, 1.4. That was about an hour and a half ago at Chanhassen. Wyndham at 3.3 and also Springfield at four inches of snow. So 35 was the high and we basically sat there most of the day. The normal is 33 and officially we've had 2.9 inches of snow at the airport. So right now we're at 33, a little colder to the west, the snow a little lighter and of course those totals will be a little bit higher uh, across the region. So when it comes to the timeline and how much snow we can expect, as of right now we have about two inches in most of the metro. Downtown St. Paul is reporting four inches according to an observer there. Um, 2 a.m. we will have right around three inches and by the time we get to the morning hours we'll probably have our grand total and that'll be of course an average across the metro of about four inches of that wet slushy snow so another inch and a half to two inches overnight tonight and then tomorrow during the day most of the snow as I mentioned will continue to fall from Bemidji down through Alexandria down through Marshall and Wilmer as well so that's where the uh, additional amounts of snow will fall during the day on Tuesday. So for the grand total, about 3.9 inches here, but you can see there'll be a swath over a half a foot. Um, in some areas, obviously, like Laverne, already have seven inches. So it does vary from place to place, and those temperatures are so fickle. 4.7 inches in uh, St. Cloud, 4.6 in Mankato, three inches there in Eau Claire. Very slushy snow there. When it comes to the, to to the totals, I mentioned two to five inches, and we have uh, 34 degrees for the temperature. This is what will happen hour to hour tomorrow. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, the temperature will be right at freezing. So some of those bridge decks and lifted uh, roadways will be slick, but of course they'll, they'll be uh, treating them throughout the evening hours. They've been out in force tonight. And then as the day rolls on, we'll drop down to about 31. And again, there could be a residual snow shower here and there, but no further accumulation is expected. And then we basically get into some warm air uh, for the next few days. We clear out on Wednesday, 36, 36 Thursday, 38 on Friday, 38 on Saturday, and then of course on Sunday, that average high should be 30, and we have another nice Sunday on tap as the Vikings play at the bank. It'll be 40 degrees at that point in time. Of course, Sven will be here bright and early at 430, continuing to watch this storm. Uh, it is pretty, but uh, anywhere between two to five inches when it's all said and done, Julie, our first snowstorm of the season. Winter is here. Yes. Thank you, Belle. All right. Well, the Salvation Army is celebrating tonight after receiving a very generous donation. A couple dropped a half million dollar check into a Cub Foods red kettle over the weekend. It is the biggest check ever received at the Salvation Army here in the Twin Cities. The Salvation Army says the couple who donated would like to remain anonymous. Makes that five spot you put in there seem a little small by comparison, doesn't it? <laughs> Coming up in sports, emotions are running high for the Wild, who've lost six of their last seven games. And the Gopher men's basketball team tips off the Big Ten ACC Challenge at the Barn. Perk has highlights next. CARE 11 Sports, from the Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine Sports Desk. If this were football, we'd be in a whole heap of trouble. That's where Clemson is ranked number one in the nation. But alas, it is men's basketball. And in hoops, Clemson hasn't made the NCAA tournament the last four years. Richard Patino looking for his fifth win of the season in the Big Ten ACC Challenge tonight. 
Gophers down by five off the missed three. Jordan Murphy soars in for the one-handed slam. Gophers down six at the break, though. Second half, Gophers down eight. Joey King wide open from the wing, knocks down the three. 17 points for the senior later on. Gophers down one. They missed two easy buckets, but it's Murphy with the putback. Great game for the freshman. Two dozen points, ten boards. Gophers win it by a half dozen. Nice victory. Remember last season, wild, mired in a dreadful slump. Folks starting call for the team to fire Yo. Then the head coach, Mike Yo, went on a tantrum rant at practice one day, breaking sticks, and shortly thereafter, the Wild became one of the league's best and hottest teams. Well, the struggling team is struggling again, mightily, losing six of their last seven. And to make matters even more challenging, they're in Chicago tomorrow to face the defending Stanley Cup champions. But before they leave for Chi Town, Mike Yo lays into his team again at practice, and this on the heels of being critical of the squad in post-game news conferences recently, to which one of the team's franchise players had this to say after the skate. Now we're looking for leadership. We need leaders. We need guys, uh, coaching staff, players. Oops, sorry. We need people that are going to lead. Um, it does no good to pout and get and get pissed off at each other. you got to come together and, and dig out of this. I mean, now is when you need leadership more than ever. It's easy to, to coach and, and to be a leader when things are going good. Much more pleasant vibes when it comes to the Vikings these days. An 8-3 and three record has them sitting pretty alone in first place in the NFC North. They currently sport the league's leading rusher, too, Adrian Peterson, who may very well continue to be just that, as this run-first offense ain't going to fix it because it ain't broke, especially with four of the final five games in cold-weather venues. Anytime you have a North in your division, you know, NFC North or AFC North, that this is a pretty good ingredient going forward when the weather starts getting colder and, and you know, things like that. And it's a little bit about a mindset, too, you know. It's, I've, since I've walked in here, it's about preaching toughness and discipline and um, accountability and being a smart team, and, you know, that's kind of who we are right now. And finally, a couple coaching notes. Lynx assistant Jim Peterson has interviewed for the head coaching post of the Connecticut Sun, one of several candidates for the job as he explores his options on the heels of the Lynx championship. And finally, Iowa State football hires a new head football coach. He is Matt Campbell, who's a relative pup in the coaching ranks at the age of 36. This guy's the head coach. In other words, Randy Shaver had graduated Iowa State before this guy was born. Oh. Oh, yeah. Easy to take shots at him when he's not here. <laughs> That's your sports. Carol Levin News back after this. We're all debating how old Randy Shaver is. But before we oh, go. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure he's happy about that. <laughs> we found some kids who managed to find the silver lining behind today's forecast. These are just some of the oh, pictures. Look at these. Nice. It's good snowman making snow. I know. It's so we, thick. Love it. we love when you guys share these pictures with us. Perfect weather for playing outside and making snowmen. You can share your snow pictures with us using the Care 11 weather hashtag. Yes. Care I love 11 it. weather. And that's what I thought too when you walked in it. I mean, I'm glad I don't have to shovel it. I'm not the shoveler at my house. But man, is it perfect for making forts and snowball sure fights. Sure to be busy at the, at the playground tomorrow and wet. So the kids are going to come home <laughs> drenched with their snow pants. And we know that some is. Western Minnesota schools on, on delay, but around here it's probably not going to be Not going to be a problem. Sorry, kids. <laughs> and Randy, you don't look a day over 28. Well, no. that's why we're debating it. I said 29 tops. Okay. <laughs> 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 Poor guy's not here.